as you might have already seen until now we created a user role permissions and all the configurations on the key cloak ui itself now i do not want to burden my client the user of my application to log into two different applications and configure all the stuff instead what i want to do is i want to provide all these create delete get update configurations in the spring boot application itself rather than key cloak ui so how can we do that here you can see that the authentication and authorization flow which we have already discussed we will try to understand the implementation and the flow using this same if you see here i am using the ui or postman method of authentication and authorization although our application is using swagger ui showing that will be a little bit complicated so let's try to understand in an easier way here we will concentrate only on this part of the flow will not concentrate on this part of the stuff so this is the expansion of the same what's happening here is a request is being sent along with the token to the spring boot application the application which we have implemented and before trying to perform the CRUD operations on the key cloak server the spring boot application first checks for the authentication and authorization of the request that is being received from the user to check if the user has the access to this specific api so once the authentication and authorization is successfully completed the spring boot application sends a rest api call to the key clock server to perform the CRUD operations on the key clock server for getting, creating, updating, deleting a user or a role and so on. So once that is successfully finished, the key clock server sends the response data. And since this response data is very specific to the key clock application, what we will do here in our Spring Boot application is we'll process the response data and we will send the response data specific to our application. Let's try to understand this with an example. Let's say we are trying to get list of users from the key clock server. So what happens here is the first call will be from the UI application to the Spring Boot application saying get me the list of users. The API which you see here is not the path of the key clock server but the path of the REST API implementation done in the Spring Boot application. So once the REST API is received, the first call will be for the authentication and authorization. So whichever the user requested this resource is being checked if he or she has the access to this specific REST API. The key clock server checks and says, yeah, this guy has the access to this REST API. Then the Spring Boot application sends the get request to the key clock server to fetch the list of users and this api is defined in the key clock server by the key clock application itself so the way we send the credentials the way we invoke the api call we will see in the application so here you just remember that we are sending an rest api call to the key clock server so once the request is received it checks if the user has the credentials to this API and then processes and gives the list of users back to the Spring Boot application. If you see here, we have list of user representation. This is a class that is defined in the key clock server itself. And I do not want to give this list of user representation directly to the user, but instead, I want to process this and convert this list of user representation into list of users. And once this conversion is done, the Spring Boot application returns the list of users to the requester. That's it. So this was a simple explanation for how can we achieve the CRUD operation implementation 
within the Spring Boot application instead of the Keyclock server. That's it for this video. Let's see the actual implementation in our next video. Thanks for watching.